In this video, we're going to learn how to compute the test statistic for a one sample proportion hypothesis test. In general, a test statistic is basically a z-score. In other sections, you'll learn that it's maybe called a t-score, but in this section with one proportion, it's called a z-score. So remember when we learned about z-scores, it basically tells you how many standard deviations x, or a certain value, is from the mean of the distribution. So in our case, a test statistic is just a special z-score because we're specifically using data from our sample and we're comparing our, in this case, proportion against the mean of the sampling distribution. Um, a little typo there. And the standard deviation is the standard error from that sampling distribution. So specifically, we're working all with sampling distributions because, well, we've taken a sample. If I were to write out a general formula for a test statistic, it would look like this. Point minus mean divided by standard deviation. Now, all these little words right here would change because a point estimate could be a sample mean, could be a sample proportion, could be a sample standard deviation. Well, not a standard deviation, but... Um, you get the point. The mean could be the mean of the distribution, whatever that distribution is. Is it a distribution of uh, proportions? Is it a distribution of means? And same thing with the standard deviation. So for our test, we have a test statistic that looks like p hat minus p naught. That's the number from the hypothesis. Uh, let me emphasize that. p naught, p zero. You get that from all the way down here, your null hypothesis. And then you divide by the standard deviation of that sampling distribution. So over here, this formula, the standard deviation of p hat, uh, at least from the way that I've written it here, is the square root of p naught times q naught divided by n. Sometimes different books will use slightly different standard deviation symbols, like right here, and then also in the denominator, but they basically have the same thing. p naught times q naught divided by n and then take the square root. So let's look at these three examples again about those um, completion rates within six years of college. So from this uh, survey of a thousand students, we want to um, compare the sample proportion of 52.9% and see if we can really say that more than half of these students have completed college within six years. So there's that word, more than half. Uh, we are not going to actually need that for right now, but that did help us out in our hypothesis um, generation. So recall from one of the previous videos, our null hypothesis is that the proportion of the population equals half, and then I didn't even write in the alternative because we don't need that. We only need the null hypothesis because that's our fixed mean. That's our going to be the mean that's right there in that test statistic formula. So let's start computing our z. z is equal to the p hat minus p naught divided by the standard deviation of p hat. So we are going to be taking the sample proportion, which is 0.529, and we're going to compare it against 50%. We wanted to see if we were at more than half. Now, the more than I actually don't need right now. I only need that 0.5. But I did use more than half to get the alternative. And I can backtrack and then figure out the null hypothesis. And then the denominator, 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 1,000. So I've filled all of that in right now. And then if I go and start doing some of the steps, 0.529 minus 0.5, so we get 0 0.029. And then to multiply, or to get your denominator, multiply in your calculator 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, then get the answer, then divide by 1,000, get an answer, and then to lastly take your square root. Um, it'll save you from doing lots of uh, parentheses type steps. So the denominator uh, is with lots of decimal places, 0 0.015811. One. 
with proportions, it's really important to use a lot of decimal places if you're going to be writing down some. Um, otherwise, try to use all of your decimal places in your calculations. I wrote on a lot here to save myself some rounding error. So if I pause right here for a moment, the width, that average width from the mean of the sampling distribution is about 1.6%, you know, 0 0.016, 1.6%. So on average of that sampling distribution, so 1,000 people in a sample, we're about 1.6% points from the mean. So now I'll do my division. Uh, the difference of my sample proportion and the hypothesized proportion was almost 3%. So 0.029 divided by 0.015811, I get a z-score of 1.83. So this is telling me that my 52.9% is 1.83 standard deviations above the mean. So in the next step, we would decide, is that a lot? Is that a little? Um, that's for the next step to decide. All right, on to the next one. Now we're looking at a two-sided test. Our null hypothesis is that we're hypothesizing the population proportion is equal to 56.1%. And we want to see if our 52.9% from the sample has a changed from 56.1%. So this 56.1, that was the completion rate from two years ago, and we want to see, well, has it changed? Uh, it looks like it's actually dropped, but is it a significant drop? That's what our end goal of hypothesis test is. But for right now, we just need a z-score, our test statistic. We'll take p hat minus p0 divided by the standard deviation of p hat. So we have 0.529 minus 0.561. And then our denominator, that big giant square root, 0.561 times, well, what's the complement of 561? 439. So that's what the Q naught was. That's uh, basically the complement. And then all over 1,000. So I'm trying to squeeze that under all this belongs out of the square root sign. Now do a little math, do some subtraction. The numerator becomes 0 0.032. The denominator, so that um, uh, sampling distribution width, is 0 0.01. 5693. So kind of close to what it was before. Uh, these standard deviations, they are differing because our P naughts, our P0 is differing. Before it was 0.5, now it's 0.6. So those denominators are going to be different. And lastly, we have to do some division. Take the 0 0.032, divide it by the 0 0.015693, and we get negative. 2.04. Let's clean that up a little bit. All right, so our sample proportion of 52.9% is just over two standard deviations below the hypothesized proportion of 56.1%. All right, and on to the last problem. So let's uh, work smarter instead of harder here. What's different about this problem than the last? Well, this one was asking for a change from 56.1%. The second problem, or the third problem, is asking for our percent if it's less than 56.1%. But Notice the null hypotheses are exactly the same. So that is all that matters in these problems. They have the same null hypothesis, so our z-score is going to be exactly the same. When I start plugging in numbers, 0.529, because my sample didn't change, compare it against the mean of 0.561, well, that didn't change, and the denominator, which is based on your null hypothesis, 
that hasn't changed. Finish writing this out. Nothing has changed, so we get the exact same test statistic. So I just worked smarter instead of harder there. I did write out everything, but numbers are all the same, so I'm going to get the exact same test statistic. So at this point, we've computed how far uh, different our sample proportions are from the hypothesized proportions. And the next step of the hypothesis test will be to decide, is the sample proportion far enough, that was in air quotes, far enough away from the mean to reject the null hypothesis?